Server Actions just got an update in the new Release Candidate 2 release and are now faster and more secure. Let's take a look at what changed. So here we see a simple form. I have a simple project set it up, it's use client. We are just having a simple form, which is submitting on submit with a button and we're calling the update user action function, which is imported from the actions file, which has use server directive on the top. So this is a server actions file and we have two server actions here. And this is the one that gets triggered. So it's getting the form data. It's getting the name out of the form data and just console logging the name. So very simple example. It looks like that. You just type in test, submit this with enter or you click the button and you see test in your console. So pretty easy, pretty simple like that. What is a server action? A server action is just pretty simply a API endpoint, but it's more abstracted for you. So it's easier. So basically it's just the API endpoint, but you don't need to configure the API endpoint. It's just made easier for you. You just have to write your server and declare a function and you can call it from the client or from the server. And this is internally triggering a, yeah, a request to a API. So what has been changed now? The first change is uh, with the second function here. This is the delete user action function and it's actually never used. That's why I print out never used here. So Next.js will automatically remove this code during next build and will not create a public endpoint. And that is a new functionality. So now we're purging things out if they are not used. This is very great because if you have a big web application, then a usual problem is that you have a lot of dead code. So code that is not used. The problem with code that is not used is it's still bundled. It's still inside of your JS bundle size. So it's still shipped to the client and what's shipped to the client needs to be loaded from the client. And this takes time. So less bundle size is less time is a quicker web application. So with the new change, this delete user action function will not be included in the client. And I will show that to you. Run PB or for you, I can write in npm build or you can type in npm build. I have just an alias set it up. So let's take a look in the next folder here now and look at server and I think app. And then we have this page JS. And yeah, that's, that's like very horrible, but let me format that with option F, uh, I've set it up prettier here. And let's just go to the top and we have something here anywhere where our server actions are. Yeah, that's looking good. So we have two IDs here, set it up for the server actions. So one ID and the second ID. So these are two functions now. And yeah, as well, I mean, we have two functions, so this is correct on the server, but now let's look at the client. So let's jump out right here and jump on the server and go to static. I think chunks app and the page file. So this is the client file. So what gets chipped to the client, we say option F again, scroll to the top and we just see update user action. So just the update user action and not the delete user action. So the delete user action is just purged out. It's not there. It's just deleted, it's not shipped to the client because it's not used. And that's a great change because it makes your apps faster. And yeah, we all love that. So let's get to the second change. And this is that server actions are now more secure. What do I mean with that? Next.js will create a secure ID to allow the client to reference and call the server action. So before server actions are, yeah, they are not called like update user action, but with an ID instead. And the ID is generated statically and deterministically. So um, the problem with that is that as a client or as a, as a malicious person, as a person who wants to attack you, you can possibly find out the way those IDs get generated. And then you can call the server actions from the client that shouldn't be called. And in general, it was possible. So the problem with that is that yeah, you just open open the arms for attackers and this is now, yeah, solved in a way, which is very cool. So now they are generated random at build time and not so de deterministically and you can actually influence that. But let's take a short look at this. We can take a look at this actually in the .next file cache and then the RC info. RC stands for React Server Components. That's the new nice thing and I will definitely make a video about that. So yeah, subscribe now to not miss that. But what we can see here is a encryption key. And this encryption key is used to encrypt those, yeah, those IDs that get statically deterministically generated and now they are more safe and you cannot guess them anymore. And actually what you can do is you can change this encryption key 
um, in a periodic way. So maybe you work in a big company and you want to change those keys um, every month or something like that. I don't know. But you actually can possibly do that. I mean, of course, not here in this file because this gets regenerated every time. But what you can do is, do I have a .env? No. So you go into your project and if you don't have it, just create a .env.local file. And here you can import something that is called next server action or I think next server actions, next server actions encryption key and set this to anything that you want. Let's say Toby Tackles Tech is the best YouTube channel on the world. Okay, that's enough. Is it enough? So you should follow him now. Okay, that's a great encryption key. So let's save this and rerun our build. Oops, so we can type in pnpm build or npm build, uh, whatever you want. And now let's take a look at this. So next cache, or let's wait a small second. Yes, next cache rc info. And we have a new encryption key here. Toby Tackles Tech is the best YouTube channel on the world. So you should follow him now. So do it, do it now. But yeah, there's actually uh, the, the, the next second change, which is very, very nice and makes the whole thing more secure. And more security is always a big thing for big companies, as well as small companies, as well as middle companies. We all want a safe application. And yeah, the changes that I introduced some days ago are very, very nice for that. But you should be aware that server actions are still just HTTP API endpoints. So just because they are now not guessable and not so um, yeah, vulnerable anymore, you should still do auth checks. So you should still type in something like if auth equals, I don't know, something like that and get the auth data from Superbase or from your uh, database, I don't know. But you really need to still handle them like they are normal API requests. So uh, you should not do all your data mutations just in the first line without securing that the person that is calling this is really uh, yeah, locked into your application. But yeah, do you need to do anything to get this all working? Nope, it's just working. I mean, not for you right now, um, but you can test this actually. And uh, what you can do here is there's a blog post about that. Let me zoom in. And here we have the command npx next code mod canary upgrade rc you can run this in your next.js 14 application um, but don't do this in production this is still a release candidate um, as you can see here so this is not production ready but this is a change which is coming with next.js 15 which i would say is coming in the next possible weeks so yeah prepare for that change prepare that everything gets more secure and more faster as well as with react 19 i will make a video about that if you don't want to miss that Follow this channel if you want to know more about use client and use server. Watch this video in the top. And thank you for watching. Bye bye.